Hey guys, I am back again with another video in the WinISD series. They wanted to show you how to create a ported sub. I'm sorry, or ported speaker, and try to figure out what the port length is, what the box volume is, and how to go about doing that. Um, we're also going to talk about port velocity and why that's important as far as chuffing is involved. Now, before we do that, we're going to go ahead and input a driver. Now, we've, I've already shown you how to input a driver, so I'm just going to start a new project with a new driver. I'm going to use Dayton ND65-4, which is a little 4-inch full-range driver. A couple reasons why I want to show you this. We're just going to do one driver um, for now. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to just go to the new project. You're going to select the driver you want. I already had my driver selected if you needed to. Uh, you know, you just go in there and figure it out. If you need to input that driver, you don't know how, see my earlier video and I'll show you how to do that. Otherwise, just select the driver you want, hit next. After you do that, select how many drivers you're going to do, and you can do all the way up to like 100. Now, I should mention if you're going to put, like, say you're going to make a Bluetooth speaker or something, and, and you want to put each speaker in an individual cabinet and port each individual speaker. You're going to want to put one driver. Now, if you are building like a Bluetooth speaker or a stereo speaker system, you're going to put both of them in the same cabinet. It's going to be a stereo speaker set. Um, then you're going to want to select two. Uh, but if you're going to put a divider in there, you know, just, just do one. And so we're just going to do one for this time just to kind of show you and, and reduce variables there. Now, we're going to select vented. Vented means some type of port. Okay, there are a couple different options here. There's closed, that means a sealed sub, and you can see it by this picture. See, it's completely sealed. There's vented, which is, of course, a vent. There's band passes, and there's passive radiators, which um, we'll talk about a little bit uh, later. I don't want to get too far into that right now. But we're going to select vented because that's what we're going to show you in this video. And then we're going to select next. Now, that's going to give you a couple options of box and driver alignment. <clears throat> Super boom box will give you like a big jump in the base region, so that's what you want. Um, extended base shelf will give you the highest F3, like if you hear someone say F3, that's what uh, they're talking about. And then the F6 is negative 6, the, the longest, furthest you can get out there. It may not be as powerful in some of the higher ranges, like the 100 decibel, 110. Um, and so what I typically do is ship... Um, Chevy Chev, and what Chevy Chev is, is it gives you the flattest response around the spectrum that you can have. Um, I am going to change this chart because I want on transfer function magnitude. This is the F3, by the way, this purple line. F6 would be this negative 6. So when you're looking at these extended base shelves, it would give you, you know, whatever the largest, sorry, smallest value really in the base region that you could get to F6 and F3 but your curve might look slower and with something like a Chevy Chev is it'll be more linear across this base region and then dip. So we're going to hit that and we're going to hit finish and if you notice it came up with a really good looking function. It came out with one driver and it says that we can get an F3 of 50 hertz with really with a 4 inch driver that's really unheard of obviously if we we're talking about a 12 inch driver or something of that nature then this would not be as good and if you just click on the graph it's going to show you you know what the hertz is up here in this range so it's telling me that about negative 3.33 decibels is at 50.14 hertz so that's good. Now we got to figure out what size box do we need to get this response, which that is a very good response, and um, and what size vent. So let's take a look at box. Just go to this tab over here and you click on box, and it shows me that that's a 0 .062 box line, which is a very small box. It's not much in there, and we'll actually tell you an idea of what size that is. I'll put it in the description. It's very small. Now. We're going to click on vents. And now typically it automatically shows you a 4 inch vent. And it does. It shows us a 4.02 4 inch vent. And you can put this at any, any size you want. So if you just want a 4 inch, there you go, 4 inch vent. Um, and it needs to be 152.75 inches long. 
Uh, for those of you who don't do math very well, that's almost 13 feet. <laughs> that's pretty long. You know, 12 times 12 is 144 plus 8. So, you know, 12 feet 8 inches long. Uh, that's obviously not doable. Now let's talk about this port and kind of how ports work. The way ports work is they tune to a certain frequency. So, for example, this particular box says it's tuned to 60 hertz. So in order to get a smaller port, we can do one of three, or a shorter port, because obviously 13 feet long is, is not doable. I mean, you can't have a .06 foot box, which is very small, and have a 13 foot long port. In fact, you, you probably can't have a 13 foot long port, period. Um, so here's a couple things that we have to take into consideration. One is the port vent diameter. The smaller the port diameter, the shorter your port is. So for example, if I change this to a one inch port, you're looking at only nine inches long now. So we're still tuned to 59.10 hertz and we have a you know nine inch port. Another way that we can shorten the port length is to change the tuning frequency. So we can change it to 80 hertz, for example. Uh, we're gonna have to change the volume but the vent is lower so if we change the Hertz going up then that's going to be lower now here's the problem that you have to get into now this particular speaker can take about 15 watts total power let's just assume that you're giving it max power 15 watts all right there's one other thing that we got to pay attention to so we have the Hertz taken care of and we now have a vent that works nine inches we could probably fit in there one inch diameter there is something called and let's go here so if you look down to rear port you see rear port air velocity all right now there's a term you probably heard of called chuffing now what chuffing is is if you hear a really bad speaker and it starts getting air out the port you start hearing a poof, like a big blow of air uh, it sounds terrible. No one likes it. That's called chuffing. You you don't want that. And anything really over 17 meters per second can have chuffing. Now there's ways to get around that. You can take your port and you can um, you know flare the ends, and that that gets rid of some chuffing. Some other things you might be able to get it up to 20, but you don't want to go like this one is. What, 33 meters a second at 55 hertz. So you see it says 55 hertz and 33 meters a second. That's way too too much. You're going to get chuffing. It's going to sound terrible. And uh, you're not going to want to do that. So, you know, the, typically people say, oh, well, the, let me just do two ports. Because if we do more ports, right, one inch ports, then, you know, then we're going to lower the air velocity coming out. And that's true. But you also increase the vent length, and it's typically about double. So it's typically what people would think is opposite. They would think that they would have it, but you don't. You double the port length. Now, now once again, you're in the right meters per second, right? That's really good, 16 and a half. You shouldn't have to worry about port chuffing at all, uh, especially if you flare it. No, no problem. But now you're at 19 inches long, and that's, once again, not really doable. So we probably only want one port. Now you could do two ports, let's say 0.75. Um, and sometimes when you do this, you're going to notice the vent length goes to zero. That's because our, we lost our tuning frequency. And so once again, we're, we're still just too high, so we can't do that. So here's the best thing to do. I'm going to go one port. Um, sometimes a speaker like this, if you can't figure out a port length for it, your your best bet is to do a passive radiator and a passive radiator allows you to get a small box like that and instead of using a port to displace volume it uses another woofer that is um, bigger than the speaker you're using so for example if you're using a three inch speaker you usually want double the surface so typically something around a six inch speaker for the port uh, I'm sorry for the for the passive radiator and that'll allow you to have a smaller box without having to worry about the port length. Um, and that's why a lot of people will go with a passive radiator. In this case, you could do a passive radiator. Um, in fact, two of those with one six and a half inch passive radiator would be good. And I, I think I said this is a four inch, and I, I apologize, this is like a two and a half inch. 
speaker. But here's what the best thing to probably do is to change this shape. If you click on it, you can change it between a circle and you can change it to a square. And what you can do is do something very simple like go 0.25, which is only a quarter of an inch thick. Now you can just put this on the bottom of the box. Let's say you're going to make your box, I don't know, six inches wide. So let's assume that you're using half inch material. So really you can have a bent diameter of 0.25 by five inches. That would get rid of the, um, you know, that would get rid of that. There you go. You're about 15 inches long, which is doable because you can wrap the box. And what that means is you can take a look at the bottom of the box and kind of wrap it around like the back or the side into it um, and, and no one will ever know. Now you're right on the verge of you know what's good, what isn't good. You're probably not going to have any issues with that, but if you're nervous and you say, hey, you know what, I'm not sure if I really want to take that chance, then just increase one of these. Do like 0.33, for example, 0.33, 5 inches wide. So if you have a 5 inch wide box or a 5 inch tall box or something, you can do a, a side slot port. This is called a slot port. So this would be one third of an inch high and then it would be five inches wide. And then that would go, you know, the width or the length of your box until you are, you know, 20 inches deep. Um, assuming like your box is, let's say a five, a five by five wide or something of that nature, uh, or five inches deep, uh, or even 10 inches deep, you know, you could, you could easily just do the slot port up the bottom, up the back, and then coming into the top of the box, and that would give you this. And what that would look like, for example, like say this is your box, your box starts here, ends here, and has, you know, a line like here. Your port would come in, come around, and come out. And so the speaker's hitting in here, the bass would come in here, come out through the port and then out through the, the back side of that, or I'm sorry, the front side of the speaker. It's one of the best ways to do that. 0.33 might be too hard to get that. You, you really probably want to go 0.25, get more like 15 inches. That's probably closer. Um, and maybe even, you know, right there at five inches is probably pretty good. You probably won't have any issues. And one of the things you could do at the, the port section if you want to is you can flare it. So, like, if you're making this box yourself, which I'm assuming because this is DIY work, you're making it, what you're going to want to do is probably take a round over bit and round over kind of the outside of that flare. And what that'll do is that'll give you a nice flared end on the, uh, on the port. And that will reduce that air velocity to something more manageable where you probably won't get any chuffing at all. Uh, this is very good. One thing that we didn't talk about is first port response. You want that to be at least double wherever you're uh, going to tune the box to. So this is 60. So you typically, in most cases, you're going to want that to be at least 120. There are instances where that may not be a, a big issue, but you typically want that to be at least 120. With us, we're at 463. You're not going to have to worry about that at all. All right, guys, so that's really the basis of what you're going to want to know about creating a port uh, and this. Um, one thing I, I did not mention, but I'll just go ahead and mention real quick. If you do not like this um, graph, you can change the box volume. So let's say you want to change it to one cubic feet. It changes it. Typically, WinISD does a pretty good job. I don't like that type of hump. I would never do that. Um, but maybe you want to go 0 0.01. See, it, it makes a big difference on what you're doing. So this was 0 0.062, uh, I think. And that's the internal cubic volume you want it to, not the external. So if you have this port, see how it shows the port in here? And once again, your port would wrap around probably because of the size it is. So it would wrap around the back and then down. Um, remember to subtract that from your box volume. Don't keep that in the internal box volume. So um, your box volume will be 0 0.062 plus the cubic feet of the port. Alright guys, that is all. If you have any questions, like always, ask them below. I have no problem answering those. I try to answer them as soon as I can. And um, 
And as always, like it if you if you learned anything. Thanks, guys.